All right, so number 26 looks like this. We have 4x over x cubed minus 4x. And if you factor it, you end up with 4x over x, x plus 2, x minus 2. All right. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2, x minus 2. It's a special case. And so I want you to find all these things here. So I want you to find your x-intercept and your y-intercept. All right, I want you to find your vertical and your horizontal asymptotes and your holes. And actually, I'm gonna write it differently. Vertical and holes kind of go together. And then horizontal is its own little shortcut. All right. And so I look and see which, which way I'm going to do these. Um, I really want to figure out my holes before I figure out my um, x-intercepts because if it, is an, if it makes the numerator zero but it also makes the denominator zero, then that's a hole. But if it only makes the numerator zero, then that's a, an x-intercept. And so you want to kind of look at those things together. Y-intercept, I want to go back to my original and see if anything makes what happens when I plug zero in for everything. Um, and so I usually, I usually start with my horizontal asymptotes and actually work my way up when I make this list. So um, <clears throat> from, the, from the way I wrote it. Horizontal, the reason I start here is because I start with it when it's unfactored. All right, because I am looking at my um, degrees. All right, so my degree on bottom is larger than my degree on top. So what does that tell me about my horizontal? What is that going to be? My degree on bottom is bigger than on top. Yep, that's when y equals zero. So my horizontal is going to be right here at y equals zero. All right. Make sense? All right, and so then I move up to my vertical and my uh, holes. Um, those are um, when I look at it in factored form. So I'm going to look at those based on what makes the denominator zero. And so for holes, they should cancel out with the numerator. For the vertical ones, they shouldn't. So I know that something's going to make this zero, something's going to make that zero, and something's going to make that zero, right? What makes this first one zero? Just zero, right? What makes this one zero? And what makes that one zero? All right. Can any of those cancel with the numerator? Oh, yes. Yes, the zero can, right? X and X can cancel. So that means that what is that zero? X equals zero is what? What's going to happen there? That's going to be a hole, right? Um, what about two and negative two? Your vertical asymptotes, right? All right. So the two and negative two, I can actually go ahead and graph. The whole, I'm going to kind of try to figure it out in just a second. All right. I will show you how to figure out exactly where that hole is. And this goes with what we're going to do today. All right, so that's my vertical and my horizontal, All right? My vertical and my horizontal, All right? So then I guess the question goes to, um, do I have a, an X and Y intercept? Like what happens here? Um, do I have an X and Y intercept? Well, I know I have a hole at X equals zero, right? Everybody see that? Um, and so I kind of want to figure out where that hole is. And the way you can do that, I'm going to pull this factored guy down here. All right, I'm going to pull him down here. The way you can figure out where your hole is, is you can go ahead and cancel that guy that would be your hole and then plug the zero in now that you've canceled it and figure out what your Y would be if I could have a Y there. And so I'd say four over 
Um, 2 times negative 2, right? That's what you get when you plug in a 0. Everybody see that? 0 plus 2, 0 minus 2. Okay. What do I get? 4 over negative 4, negative 1. So my hole is actually going to be at 0, negative 1. That's where my hole is going to be. So if I go to 0, negative 1, that's where my hole is. All right? Everybody see that? Now here's the deal. Um, the only thing that made my numerator zero, which would normally be my x-intercept, is my hole, right? So I do not have an x-intercept. Don't have one. Why don't you have one again? Because the only thing that would make my numerator zero, that's when, that's when you have an x-intercept, when y is zero, and that's when your numerator is zero, that's my hole. So it cannot be a hole and an x-intercept because intercept indicates it intercepts it. Hole in indicates it jumps over it. But so how would you those two problems. Like if it's a hole and it's what happens when I plug in zero for x? It's zero. it's zero over zero. That is also a problem, right? In fact, I have crossed my y-axis. Where did I cross my y-axis? At negative one, at the hole, right? I actually jumped over my y-axis. So I actually do not have any y-intercepts on this one either. So there's no y-intercepts because where it jumps over Because, yep, okay. that happens to be where my hole is. And so then I can graph. So basically I know, okay, I'm going to get to this guy. I'm going to get infinitely close to this, right? But I'm not going to go up. Why am I not going to go up? What has to happen if I go up? There's a horizontal asymptote, which technically I could jump over. It just means that somewhere on the graph I get infinitely close to it. But the other problem is if I go up, what am I going to cross? cross? I'm going to cross my x-axis. That would be called an x-intercept. Do I have any x-intercepts? No. I do not. I cannot go up. Okay? Which means that on this side and on that side, I'm going to stay in one of those quadrants, right? Because I can't cross the x-axis. So I have to stay there. Um, and so I just have to determine where I am. Am I up on top in positive range? Am I on bottom in negative range, right? And that's gonna be by just plugging it in. So if I just pick a number, let's say I pick negative four, which is fine, it doesn't matter. Then I'm gonna do just my little trick. I don't even care, is here, right here. Is my numerator positive or negative if I plug in a negative four? Negative. Denominator, what happens here if I, and you can go over here if you want to, if I plug in a negative four. I get a negative cubed, right? Minus, plus a 16, but it's gonna be like negative 64 plus 16, right? So is it gonna be positive or negative? Negative. negative. So where am I, positive or negative? Negative. negative over negative, I am gonna be on which side of it? I'm gonna be up here. So he's gonna look like that, right? Everybody agree? Let's do the other side. You want to always choose a negative number? No, I just, I'm choosing on this side of the horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to, I already know what happens in between them. I can see that. Now I'm going to go on, on uh, this side of it. I cannot cross him at all. So it has this, he is contained on this side of it. So I just need to know what the graph does on that side. And then I need to know what the graph does on this side. So I'm going to pick another number. I'll pick positive four for the other side of it. Um, so if I plug in a positive 4, what's my numerator? Yeah, it's positive. What about here? Is it positive or negative? 64 minus 16? That's also positive. Where am I on that side of the graph? Positive. So it's going to look something like that. So that's what my graph is going to look like here. Homework looked like this. We have y equals x plus 6, and they were nice and already factored it for you, x minus 2, x plus 3. And so once again, I want my x and y intercepts. I want my vertical asymptotes and my holes, and I want my horizontal. All right, easy enough. All right, so um, I'm going to start with, it's already in factored form, so that's easy enough. What's my degree on bottom going to be? It's, it's going to be 2, right? So if I were to FOIL that, I would have a degree on bottom of 2 and a degree on top of 1. What is my horizontal asymptote? Yeah, it's y equals 0. 
All right, let's look at vertical asymptotes and holes. What makes the denominator zero? There's two numbers that make my denominator zero. Positive two and negative three. Do any cancel? No. So none of them cancel. So what are they? They're both verticals, right? X equals two and X equals negative three are both vertical. All right, so I can go ahead and graph these. I can graph my horizontal. And I can graph my verticals. Do I have any holes? No, I don't have any holes in this particular graph. So it's gonna be none. No holes. Two, negative three and positive two. Because nothing cancels with those things on bottom, right? So if there was an x minus six on the bottom, then would that be a hole? If there was an x minus two on the top, or yeah, or an x plus three on the top, yes, you would have a hole. Wherever it is, either three or negative two, yeah, wherever it is, mm -hmm. whatever makes it zero would be where your hole is. So because none of those cancel, there are no holes. Let's look at our intercepts. My y-intercept is what happens when I plug in a zero for x. All right, so if I plug in a zero for x on top, I will get six. On bottom, I will get negative two times three. So I have a negative one. So my x-intercept happens at zero, negative one. Zero, negative one. That's my y-intercept. That's what it's always meant, right? All right, what about x-intercepts? That's where my numerator is zero, right? Where my numerator is zero. So if I set my numerator equal to zero, what is x going to be? Negative six. Negative six. Now, this is kind of an interesting, um, yeah. Remember I said it can cross that, but it always eventually goes back to it, okay? So with horizontal, it's not undefined there. That doesn't mean it's undefined. It means that's what X is gonna eventually approach on that side of the graph, okay? So it can go over it and come back to it, which is actually kind of what it does here. It actually crosses through and goes. So you still need to test and see where it's coming from and where it's going. All right, so I, I typically would test in between these. I would test in between here to find out if it's coming from here and down that way or if it's coming from here and up that way, right? I'm just trying to see where it's coming from to cross, all right? And so I'm gonna test in between to see what's happening. What I do know is that's my only x-intercept. So the middle part's easy to figure out. Why? It must be headed down. So your middle is typically going to look like a parabola unless you have an x-intercept in there and then it can be this little circular guy because remember he can go through the horizontal asymptote if you have one and it can just approach it on the sides. But when it's like this and you know that you know that you know there is a point below the x-axis and that there are uh, no other intercepts in that, that area, it's going to be a parabola. It has to be. And in this case, a parabola pointed down. So I know what's happening here. Here we're going to have some sort of parabola. Don't know what it looks like, but we're sketching, so we're going to do that. On the left-hand side, I'm going to pick a number in between negative 3 and negative 6, just to figure out where I'm coming from, okay? And so like negative 4, and I plug it into the top there. What happens when I plug in negative 4 into the top? Negative 4 plus 6 is positive. On the bottom, negative 4 minus 2, that's going to be negative negative four plus three, that is going to be negative. negative. So it's gonna be positive, right? It's gonna be positive, which means what? It's on the positive side. Right, it means it's gonna start on the positive side here, right? And then it's going to cut through it somewhere, right? It's got to, so it's gonna do something like that. Okay. It's gonna cut through, it. it's gonna cut through it. Mm -hmm. it's, it can, it just has to reapproach it. So it's just going to cut through, and it's going to be approaching it on this side of it. Oh, is it because on the middle one, it's at negative one, so it's going to have a negative one? Oh. Well, it's because we know it cuts through the x-axis, because we have an x-intercept. Okay. And so if it started above it, then it has to go this way through it. If it had started below it, it would go that way through it. But it's still going to go infinitely this direction, right? Yeah. See all this perspective, this so direction. 
why do I know that on the right side of this graph I'm contained to either here or here? Why, why do I know it doesn't do what it did over here? How do I know that? I don't have another intercept to deal with. So I cannot cross the x-axis again, meaning whatever I figure out over here is going to stay there. It's going to be contained in this group or this group because it cannot cross the x-axis again. I've already determined there's not another x-intercept for it to do that. I'm just going to pick a point, right? So I'll pick four again because that's working for us. So on the top, four is going to give us what? Yeah, which is positive, right? Um, four minus two, that's going to be positive. Four plus three is going to be positive. So this is contained right here. This looks like this. As if, if I were doing this, I would say, um, compare it to something like that. That's obviously not in simplest form. Why? Well, the truth is you can reduce it, but when you say reduce, you're actually just doing this. Um, you have a common factor. And that's the same that is true here. You have a common factor that can be canceled out. And so that's all we're going to be doing with these rational expressions in this section. We are just going to be simplifying them, which means we're going to be factoring out common factors and reducing them. Okay? So let's look at example one. All right? Example one. We have x squared plus 10x plus 25 over x squared plus 9x plus 20. We're going to factor it first. Now, if I'm saying this because this is what we're moving towards. If I were having you graph this, I would say find the horizontal asymptotes, find the y-intercept. I would do that before I factored, right? Because I can see what my degree is very easily. I can see what it would be if I zeroed out my y's, 25 over 20. And so that gives me my y-intercept and my... Um, horizontal asymptote very quickly before I factor, right? And so this is the form you're gonna look at, and then you're gonna factor and say, can I cancel? That's a whole. Can I not cancel? That's a vertical asymptote. So we're moving towards these larger ones to be able to deal with, okay? Um, so right now we're gonna say factors of 25 that add up to 10. That's easy, what is that? Comment. Yeah, so it looks like this. Two. What about the bottom? Factors of 20 that add up to nine. Yeah, they're both plus and it's five and four, right? All right. This is the point where I would determine holes and, as and vertical asymptotes, right? Um, what's going to cancel here? X plus five. So what am I left with? This is simplest form. I cannot reduce that anymore. That is simplest form for this rational. All right. And so for these... Is asking for rational, um, um, simplest form for these rational. I want to point out this little thing right here. State any restrictions. This is basically asking you to tell if there's a problem with the domain. Now, in simplest form, it looks like we only have one. What's my only problem in simplest form? X cannot be negative four. When they ask for restrictions, they want it right here, which means we have one more restriction. All right, so something else I do. So they say simplify and state any restrictions. I would figure out my restrictions before I simplified, okay? I would factor it, figure out my restrictions, and then cancel out anything. What's one more restriction this actually has on it? It can also not be negative five. Those are my restrictions. So this is my entire answer right here.
So think about when you're multiplying fractions. If I have something like this, what am I going to do? Right, but I'm going to cross cancel first, right, to make it easier. Yes. And so that's the same concept here. You can cancel any top to any bottom. In fact, if I had something like this, 2 over 8 times, let's say, something that it goes into, I could reduce those first, right? I could reduce them any top to any bottom, even diagonally. So top to bottom, directly or diagonally, you can cancel with fractions. And that's true for these as well. So I'm going to factor this first. Um, I'm going to factor this. 2x plus 1, x plus 3, x minus 4 cannot factor, it is already in simplest form. x squared minus 16, that is x plus 4, x minus 4. And then x squared plus 8x plus 15 is going to be x plus 3, x plus 5. So my first step is to factor everything. Factor everything when you're multiplying, okay? Then you can start canceling, all right? Then you can start canceling. Um, and what I do is I go through every single piece of it one at a time. So I look here and I say, can 2x plus 1 cancel with anything? Anything down here or anything over here? Can it? The answer is no. I'll tell you my little deal is I just do this. I'm like, okay, he is not going to cancel. He's going to be part of my final answer. Let me tell you, if you don't do this, eventually you're going to forget one of those little factors thrown in there. X plus 3. Can that cancel with anything? Yes, that can cancel across here, right? What about the x minus four? Yes. yes, that can cancel there. Moving to the other group, what about the x plus four? No, that cannot cancel. All right, the only thing that I have left is this x plus five, can that cancel? No, it cannot cancel. And then, yes, you just multiply across, right? So on the top, I have 2x plus 1, x plus 4. And on the bottom, I have x plus 5, all right? x plus 5. Um, and I have to be honest, I actually let you leave it just like that. I don't make you refoil it. They make you refoil it. I don't. All right? I just, you just leave it right like that. You're good to go, all right? Um... And so this would be your answer here. Make sense? Let's try one. Check understanding three, multiply the products. So if I were to say one half divided by two thirds, what's your rule for fractions? Keep change flip. That is also the rule here. Um, so I'm going to keep the first one. They want me to divide. Keep the first one. So I'm going to say four minus x over three x plus two x minus two. By the way, you're not going to be given it in factor form. So I would flip it first. Um, and then we're going to change it to multiplication. And then we're going to flip this guy. So I'm going to put the x minus 2 and the 7y minus 5 on top. Why they threw in a, other variables beyond me. And then on bottom, I'm going to have 5x minus 4. All right. And then I start canceling. We'll start up here. Can I cancel 4 minus x? Yes. Yeah, what do I need to do first? Take out a negative 1. So this is going to actually be... Negative 1 times x minus 4. So now what can it cancel with? X minus yeah, the x minus 4. And don't forget this little negative 1. He is part of your final answer. All right, 3x plus 2. Can that cancel with anything? No. 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 What about x minus 2? Yes. yes. What about 7y minus 5? 
No, what about this little five hidden in here? No. You see why I boxed them? Yes. That's the guy that usually gets lost. All right, so on top we have a negative 7y minus 5, and on bottom we have a 5, 3x plus 2.